Hi, Steve Cooper, Rank Success, and this is another um, broadcast in relation to news items of topical interest. So if you're going for promotion for Sergeant Inspector, Chief Inspector, um, really interesting article in the Guardian today. It's a, uh, um, an article written by a journalist, Melissa Deans, and it's in relation to Elizabeth Stanko, OBE, who is a criminologist who has been commissioned by the Home Office uh, over the last couple of years to investigate and to look into um, an unprecedented investigation into why the police have been failing so badly to tackle sexual violence uh, but is there any chance of fixing a system that seems so broken is the question and the reason I've um, kind of raised this today is because as I've alluded to before on promotion boards you will often be able to predict questions not necessarily the exact ones of course but you may well be able to predict questions that are topical and relevant and current and part of the zeitgeist if you like some of the challenges facing policing uh, currently and in the years to come and historically clearly the uh, uh, standards of investigation um, in relation to rape and sexual violence uh, by police has been um, variable shall we say and in this article here I was really interested because it's a long read so it's a it's a great resource for you to to get an overview on this um, in addition over and above to what your force are doing so when I talk about things that appear in the news this is one uh, the peel assessments are another which I've done videos and blogs on you may well uh, in relation to areas of concern or areas for improvement you may well find um, questions arising in relation to those issues and you can plan and prepare for them um, it's more difficult to plan and prepare for them if you haven't done the research if you haven't raised your awareness then as you raise your awareness of these things by staying well briefed well read well informed um, you're far better equipped to um, prevail in a promotion selection process which is essentially a and should be a professional conversation between yourself and a interview panel and you know they will expect that you will have done some level of preparation for that and this is one of those articles so uh, it's titled I know where the bodies are buried and it's one woman's mission to change how the police investigate rape um, that's a, a kind of homage to Hilary Mantle's book uh, where the bodies are buried um, and it alludes to some of the, the, the politics and the shenanigans that have gone on as part of her um, interactions with the police uh, and organisations over a period of time. But the interesting thing here is, um, in so I'll read the first paragraph. In September 2021, the criminologist Betsy Stanko went into the Metropolitan Force to work out why they weren't catching rapists. The previous year, less than 3% of rapes reported to the Met had resulted in charges being brought. In 2021, that percentage almost halved. The Home Office had given Stanko a mandate to force the Met, and so this is in relation to the Metropolitan Police to start with, but it also covers other forces. Um, so they gave a mandate to, to force the Met to open its files, and now she and her team of 54 academics, 47 of them women, all of them scholars of sexual violence, um, gained access to everything. So tens of thousands of case files covering the previous four years, shift observations, video recorded interviews, conversations with officers at every rank and victims um, of these offences. So a pretty uh, comprehensive um, investigation. Uh, the Home Office awarded £6.6 .6 million and the operation was called Operation Soteria Bluestone, uh, which is after the Greek goddess of safety. Um, they focused on uh, five forces, but there are other forces here that have uh, volunteered. Uh, and all I can do is just encourage you as an overview ahead of a promotion selection process to look at the historical perspective, uh, the current perspective of where um, forces are, particularly your force, um, because they were able to look at lots and lots of things. So the interviews, the recorded rape cases, they watch videos with the complainants and the suspects. They convened 15 focus groups. They observed police training courses. They conducted their own interviews with victim survivors and investigators. Uh, and at the end of it, all that was shared uh, with uh, the Met senior leaders and the mayor's office. So out of that comes 
uh, a whole load of relevant, meaningful information for you as a promotion candidate to really start getting to grips with because one of the um, issues and the topics that frequently arise across many forces and historically has been standards of investigation. And I've recently done some blogs around that and the fact that the College of Policing are revisiting the process of investigation and that's, got, that's what this article has also got some meaningful um, content in relation to the process of investigation. Uh, but I've done blogs as I've said before around that so you can read those in conjunction with this today. But this article is particularly interesting um, for you in terms of a brief and some of those issues around um, the uh, process that are uh, that is highlighted or recommended here for the police to look at uh, certainly now and going forward over the next few months some of the key takeaways that i take away from this article uh, are you know first of all it's a good history it's a good overview it's very insightful it's quite shocking in relation to some of the language the attitudes and the interactions uh, through this investigation with various people uh, the gaps that are still there today to fill the resourcing issue because there's no escaping this needs money the government to put 6.6 .6 million into it it's going to need a whole load more to support those officers that are working as alluded to here 29 hour shifts with overtime to get the, the investigations they can get you know really conscientious um, focused professional investigators working in this difficult area investigating rapes and sexual offences to get those cases to court uh, and there's not enough of them they're not well enough trained so unsurprisingly there's some really good recommendations that have come out here to get police into to relook at it to revisit it and you are going to be the leaders managers and supervisors of the next generation going forward who will take this and these working practices as this kind of consolidates and evolves through investigative practice and so some of those those points here that, that I take away from this very very quickly are to investigate the suspect not the victim and at least do both um, because they found that there was a focus on investigating the victim uh, uh, disproportionately to the suspect uh, so that's the first point of a suggested um, process for investigation target repeat offenders and there is a new role of a disruption officer which has had some success that's alluded to here in terms of um, arresting rapists so if you don't know what a disruption officer is as part of your strategy as a investigator then have a look at it this article alludes to it and your force may well be able to give you more as will the college of policing um, look after victims I mean, you know, uh, policing does look after victims, but not as good as it should be, not as consistent, consistently as it could do. And they allude to in the, this article, it being a, you know, 50% of victims drop the charge. It's a poorly understood area. So, you know, all of this is complex in terms of getting to where you want to be, which is a greater proportion of cases brought to charge. Um, and ideally more convictions for this. Um, and they argue that there's a scope for more restorative justice, uh, as in New Zealand and Canada. So there's some, some food for thought there. And this is what I was interested to see. Train and support more specialist officers. There is never enough. And whilst finite resources are a fact of life, um, you can't argue this and not provide the relevant training, resources uh, and equipment uh, for officers to have that resilience as well to um, raise the game and to ensure that those standards of investigation are consistent in this highly contentious um, and, and, and complex area. Um, improved data stored on investigations, particularly those investigations that don't result in a charge. So better intelligence there. Um, they make a comment there around policing is uh, an analog force stuck in the 20th century and policing has been behind the curve with a lot of this with technology um, and the other point there is to improve officers skills in examining phone and social and media uh, records so again lots of issues around there around how you do that effectively uh, how you manage and process digital evidence uh, the balance of rights and the evidential and investigative needs with that. So that's a complex area and I know that's something that policing is wrestling with at the moment. They talk and, and make an observation which is, which is um, 
one that resonates which is cultural transformation is a long game in policing um, and generally and there is a need here for some other qualities so in, in rape investigations a need for greater curiosity so alluding perhaps to uh, more aspects of the investigative mindset um, a need for greater empathy and that's linked to the competency and values framework emotional intelligence and empathy is one of the four components of emotional intelligence so they're arguing for more of that there uh, and intelligence so more of the uh, not only intelligent approaches to investigation but also from perhaps some of those improved data pictures around you know um, repeat offenders and the process of investigation so there's some kind of backlog and record of it um, and, uh, and why is all this important well as I alluded to at the beginning you may well face a promotion board question directly off the back of this and the work that your force is putting in place to make things better and one of the things that I've got here one of the, the draft ones that I just thought I'm now draft ones and I said you can predict them so try predicting them um, as a newly promoted leader and a supervisor of investigations how will you ensure that your team are investigating to the high standards required uh, and especially around support for vulnerable victims so whilst you might not get asked that particular question, that's a typical question, that's a fair question, um, because again, how do you think of yourself? You may well be going for inspector and uh, chief inspector, so you are managing teams who are managing investigations, if you like, supervising investigations, but you are the overview or the oversight of it, so what does it mean to you? Um, another alternative around that, what do you believe are some of the challenges faced by investigators investigating rape and sexual offences at the moment and what will your approach be to supporting your teams to meet the standards required so again heavy on this theme here heavy on the theme of um, the standards of investigation so the effective investigation of crime is a, a driver of public confidence so starting to think holistically around this helps you set yourself up for potential questions and then seeing where it all sits really just being informed and having a higher degree of awareness around this and gives you a, a confidence to talk, you've got more ideas, more insights around it. If you put your finger on the pulse, you know, you're nearer to where you need to be uh, in terms of readiness for a promotion process. And, and, and just think about now about where all of this sits in terms of the investigative process. So there's some added ingredients, some elements, components there that are alluded to. But in terms of the wider process, uh, of investigation and whether it's the old one and the core investigative doctrine or whether it's the one that the College of Policing have thrown an invite out recently to you uh, on consultation on the new process you know coming back to the beginning as investigators you, you've got those initial stages of instigation when a, a report uh, or crime is received uh, and then you've got initial investigation so golden hour, fast track actions, all those, those things. And then you come to that first key decision point, really, for supervisors of investigations, for managers, which is investigative evaluation. So I see a lot of this sitting there in those three stages. Where do you see it sitting? And how will you get up to spec on all of this in time for you to be able to, you know, impress a promotion board uh, and to uh, let them see that you're well informed and well read. Okay, I'm not going to say any more. I just thought that that was a really interesting long read article in The Guardian. I don't read The Guardian, Guardian normally, but it, it came up in front of me on social media and I had a look at it, a bit of a deeper dive, and I'm popping back up again if you like to surface and to say to you, if you haven't seen this, have a look at it. I'll put the link to the article below this video to help you. Um, find it and get up to up to spec and get briefed uh, but wherever you are on your promotion uh, journey if you want to download a digital promotion toolkit and just hit the ground running uh, with your effective preparation for a promotion opportunity you can do that on my site ranksuccess.co.uk anytime uh, a promotion masterclass and digital guides that are bespoke to the rank that you're going for okay i'll be back with another video in due course until then take care and stay safe